Hi, this is Siddharth from Telecom Lead. ICR, IER, a think tank, along with a broadband forum, released finding of a study on estimating the value of new generation internet-based application service in India. Here we have Dr. Rajat Katuria, Director, ICR, IER, revealing the findings of the report. Maybe not in metros, but in, in so many parts of the country, um, people have not seen a fixed line phone. Uh, it's been totally absent and they've only seen a mobile phone, which is why India is called a mobile first country. And of course, the fact that fixed lines are now declining, which is not really a good thing. Uh, in India does become not only a mobile first, but a mobile growing economy where mobile usage on the, uh, where internet usage on the mobile is going to perhaps be the dominant source of usage for the internet. So the Indian impacts, the numbers are there for you to see. Uh, as I said, I'm not going to spend time uh, talking about the global results, but the Indian results are higher. And here are the mainline, two mainline results, and then I'll translate them into absolute numbers. A 10% increase in internet usage, of course, by state, uh, is going to result in a 3.3% increase in GDP on average uh, for 2015. These are results from 2013 until 2016. That's the panel that we've used, 19 countries, uh, 19 states and, and four years of data, 2013 to 2015, 16. And, and, and so that, remember the number that I had quoted earlier, 2.4% uh, uh, was the number that we got in 2012. So this number is significantly higher uh, than the previous number. And this is something that uh, uh, we had probably uh, not entirely expected, but you know, it, it shows up as a fairly large uh, impact. Not subscribers and total internet traffic leads to a 3.3% increase in India's GDP uh, in the four year period that I am talking about. So it's a fairly substantial impact and larger than the impact that we had got earlier, which was 2.4%. If we break this up into not just all internet usage, as I said, India is going to be a mobile first economy. Uh, and so what is the impact of internet traffic on the mobile? And we repeated the study for total we have for mobile internet traffic, and we got a low result, of course, because total internet usage is a superset of mobile internet usage, or in other words, mobile internet usage is a subset of total internet usage. So a 10% increase in mobile internet usage leads to a 1.3% increase in GDP. And this is still a high number, it's not a uh, nothing to be trifled at. It's still a high number, 1.3%. Because remember, in 2009, the mobile impact that both TV and I we spoke about was only 1.2%. Uh, so this is still higher than the uh, than the previous number. So the results are quite uh, quite large, and if you translate them into absolute numbers, which means that in India, internet traffic last year, 2015-16, increased by 17%. And if you do a little bit of algebra, you will get a number of $100 billion plus. Which means if the internet economy added about $100 billion to the Indian economy in 2015-16. That's a lot. If you deconstruct that and say, okay, how much does mobile broadband add? The number comes out to be about 20 billion. If we project this to 2020, we will get very large numbers, 500 billion plus for total internet and for the app economy or for the uh, for the what we are talking about, you will get about 270 billion dollars. So the, the headline result for this report: How much does the app economy contribute to India today? 20 billion dollars. How much will it contribute in 2020? It will contribute about $270 billion. Nothing to be trapped with that, very large amounts. And therefore, and what we do after these results is we try and show what are the channels through this these results are occurring. And you have apps on your phone, you, you have you know uh, your 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 e-commerce sites, you have taxi hailing, you have very innovative app, one very innovative app that 
we found was you know, matchmaking for uh, differently able people. And it's doing pretty well. ATM, of course, post demonetization has done well and will continue to do well as we move to a regime where we use less cash and more digital transactions. So we've surveyed all these apps and the, the way the apps work is they drive efficiency, uh, they help rid of asymmetric information. You can rate taxi drivers, taxi drivers can rate you. The chance of buying a bad car today is almost zero because you have you know, all the information available through apps. Right? So asymmetric information is almost bridged, if not eliminated, and efficiency is driven, new business models have come up. So these are the channels through which the impacts are occurring. Uh, let me now just conclude very quickly to say that you know the impacts are large, they will only grow. Apps are going to become not only important in itself uh, by driving efficiencies, but I think in the future, they will also become a source of creating jobs because the jobs today are not going to be the jobs that people like me, uh, you know, working for somebody else. It's possible that the millennium will want to work for themselves, entrepreneurs will want to work for themselves. You will have what is called the non-employment workforce, which will become very large. Already it is very large in the United States, and it's only a matter of time before that kind of comes to migrates to India as well. So uh, we need to know the kind of jobs, the nature of jobs that the app economy will also generate. That's not something we've done in this study. But this is something that we can do in the future. The other thing that we can do in the future is look at you know, more in-depth case studies statewide and take advantage of the heterogeneity across states to see you know, which are the states that are developing these startups, these apps, and where are those impacts happening so that they can become benchmarks for other states to follow in a paradigm of what I think is great for the economy, competitive federalism or cooperative federalism. If states compete with one another, you know, technologists compete with apps, compete with one another, and go to regions, areas where there is opportunity, I think it will only help uh, us overcome many of our deficits, including the job deficit that we have. So they won't solve our jobs problem, but I think they can be a good uh, trigger for, for job creation. Uh, as well. So there's lots to be done in the future, but I think what uh, this report and the team uh, has shown through the support of Broadband India Forum, already in India, apps are having a significant impact and it would be a shame if this impact is not further entrenched and further kind of catalyzed in an environment which is uh, suitable for the growth of applications because they can have a significant impact. They are not at full potential. For full potential, we need to cover the you know, broadband deficit, the digital literacy, etc. All of that, uh, and I'm not going to talk about it, but the full potential is a lot more. So we should not constrain apps. We should free the apps so that they can achieve full potential. Thank you very much.